Hi, I'm Leo from Boings, and today we're going to talk about the topic of green screening. You've probably heard of it already. It's a technique where you use a one colored background, usually green, sometimes blue, to remove and replace it afterwards. This is often used in studios for news productions or big Hollywood movies where filming on location isn't possible or too expensive. And you can also goof around with it and place yourself everywhere you want. But it's not as easy as just hanging a green fabric on the wall. There's a lot you can do wrong, so today we're going to take a look at how to properly use it. First, you need to pick a backdrop. There are some premium backdrops, which are more durable, usually bigger, and made out of 100% cotton, which makes them less reflective. These are worth an investment, but if you are low on budget, a cheap one will do the job just fine. You can also use an old blanket and some tape, get creative and build your own green screen from scratch. Now that you've got yourself a backdrop, the key point for a good green screening setup is consistent color and that's not only determined by the fabric. First, you should make sure there are no creases or folds in your fabric. They could cast a shadow and create darker spots on the green screen. Iron your green screen before hanging it, but check your care instructions because some fabrics shouldn't be ironed. The other very important part for your green screen setup is the lighting. You have to make sure everything is evenly lit and nothing is under or overexposed. So let's talk gear first. What lamps should you buy? Well, that also depends on your budget. Cheaper entry level lamps will do the job just fine. But if you can afford it, better more expensive lamps are worth the cost. Also make sure that you get at least three lamps and that they're all dimmable. We at Boeing's use LED panels. They are energy efficient, the individual LEDs last longer than other types of lamps, and they won't run hot. So now that you've equipped yourself with lighting gear, what to do with it? Let's take a look at the usual setup without the lights. You have a subject in the middle, a green screen behind, and the camera in front. First, make sure there's plenty of space in between, so the subject won't cast a shadow on the green screen. Let's talk about the lights. As said earlier, we have three of them, so how would you arrange them here? You might say we could all put them in one row behind the camera, but that's not optimal. The green screen is evenly lit, but the subject is too, which removes all the shadows. Therefore, everything looks flat and you're losing the depth in the shot. This also happens on photos that were took with a flash. So instead, we are using a technique that is called three-point lighting. First, you place the so-called key light, which is pointing at a 45 degree angle at the subject on either side of the camera. It's for lighting the subject in general. Next, you place the backlight opposite to the key light and dim to around 40%. It's for highlighting the edges of the subject, so it will stand out more from the background. Lastly, you'll place the fill light on the other side of the camera, also at a 45 degree angle. This one is dimmed to around 60 to 70% and it's for lighting up the shadows on the face of the subject so nothing is underexposed. Consider that our starting point. From here you can add as many light sources as you want. Let's take a look at where you might place them. The fourth light could be used for the background. It is placed behind the subject and pointing up directly at the green screen. This will remove any shadows. A fifth light could also be used as a background light. This is important for wider green screens, so you would place both lights at around a 30 or 40 degree angle behind the subject pointing at the green screen. It's important to notice here that you shouldn't overexpose your green screen. It is hard to remove in post. An additional sixth light could be used for supporting the key light. It is placed next to the key light and brightens up the whole scene a bit more. A seventh light could be used to support the backlight, so it would be placed opposite to the fill light. Don't worry if you haven't understood everything yet. A detailed description with images is provided on our website. Remember that this is just one concept on how to light your green screen. You should try around and use whatever works best for you. On a not unimportant side note, your camera settings should all be in manual mode. That means exposure, ISO specifically, focus and white balance. So your green screen won't change color throughout your footage. Now that your setup is ready, we are going to take a look at the process of removing the green screen, which is also called chroma keying or just keying. There are plenty of hardware solutions like the Blackmagic Design Atom Switcher, which has a built-in keyer. Today, we'll focus on software, especially our live video production app MimoLive. 
But the process is very similar between most hard and software solutions, so you shouldn't have a problem to adapt it elsewhere. Here you see our highly paid model for today's shooting. If we go into Mimo Life now, you'll find the Kia under Filters. In your program it might be called Effects. Mimo Life offers a basic and a pro chroma Kia. It might sound counterintuitive first, but the basic has more settings while the pro has less. The pro is made for well lit setups, while the basic has more settings to compensate for inconsistencies. Because we already learned how to properly light a green screen, we will use the pro one. After adding it, you need to open its settings. There at the top, you see a drop down under setup. With this drop down, you can go through the different steps of setting up the chroma key. First, you set the hue, which is like selecting the color of your green screen. In the preview on the right, there is a graphic. There you see a spike at green and you want to aim for that spike by adjusting the slider. The next setting is the cutoff, which works like a tolerance. With it you select how many different color tones around the selected hue will be keyed out. It's best to use the graphic again for adjusting it. The next setting is feather. It's for the softness of the keyed edges. The higher the feather, the more softer the edges. Lastly, the despill will remove reflections from the green screen to other objects and then to your subject and the green trend around the edges of your subject. It will replace these with the despill color, so that should match the color of the new backdrop you are planning to add in. Here you again use the preview. Remember that even if you are using a different program, the steps for keying the image are pretty much the same. The controls might look different, but in the end it's more about understanding the basics here. Now that you are done keying the image, you can replace the background with, for example, clouds, a still image, a video, or some visuals. That's it for now, and remember to subscribe to our channel for more live video essentials. See you again in the next video.